Hey guys, what is up? Redmaster here, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today, uh, we do have a uh, discussion sort of topic to, uh, or I have a discussion topic to share with you all, and that's related to the latest changes in the update, a new feature and balance update, uh, released on 420. Um, so, there are a couple of things in this that I did want to discuss, uh, both positive and negative. Um, I'm just going to go down the list, starting with the new gameplay feature. So, randomly generated cards will all bleh, randomly generated cards are now also revealed to your opponent. We believe this will make the game feel less random and more strategic, giving players the chance to demonstrate their skills by remembering and planning for randomly generated cards. Um, now, if you haven't seen this already on TV, things like Ajira, Flux, uh, the Dragon's Horde, Banshee... Anything that will give a player a card, um, I think, I don't, I don't know about Archer, I think Elvish Archer too, although I haven't checked up on that. Um, nearly everything can be revealed to um, both you and your opponent in terms of randomly generated cards, and I think this is probably a very good change, uh, just because people... I know some who didn't really like the feel of having to guess what their opponent drew and throwing off the strategy of their game because, you know, um, their opponent drew a firestorm or a burning sun or something that could have countered their deck very easily. Um, but now, with this new revealing feature, I think this will give players the opportunity to better strategize and better prepare for um the side effects if you will of flux dragon horde archer anything that can get can give a random card so uh, a very good change here and i haven't run into it yet myself in terms of playing with it but i'm excited to see how it can affect gameplay you know from a personal view uh, anyway, we're going to move down to the two card changes now, and the only two that were really hit were Archer and Swift Justice. Um, now, one is a nerf, and one is a slight buff. Um, as you can probably tell, the Archer actually got the swift, uh, subtle buff out of this. Uh, despite that its attack uh, got lowered, its health was also increased. Now, to some people think, oh, Elvish Hunter got nerfed, its attack got lowered. Um, no, that's not the case here, actually. Instead, we got a subtle buff because now it's at 4 health. Um, at 4 health, uh, it can block attacks from Reckless and Salahar Rider uh, that it would automatically die to. You know, if my opponent threw out an archer, it gave me a Reckless. That just countered the archer and it gave me an extra body on the field. So... Bringing it up to four, I think, made it more dangerous. And, I mean, without the three attacks, sure, it's not one of the strongest um, range units out there, in my opinion. But in, uh, just give that a school of magic with any sort of range deck like we've been seeing with uh, range units lately. And, um, you know, it could be brought up to a three instantly like that. Um, so, yeah, Archer, I think definitely got a buff out of this. Uh, now moving on to Swift Justice. Cost increased to 4. Now, this was sort of like a random change that was, you know, unexpected. Um, like, oh, why did Swift Justice get uh, a cost increase? Nothing was really wrong with it. Uh, and that's true. Nothing was wrong with Swift Justice by my, uh, or by others' sight. But, um, if you think about it, Swift Justice... Uh, also drew a card. Now that draw might not seem much, but think about what some of the other two damage cards are doing. You have Plunder, which is investing, so and that's at three. But you also have Flames of Eternity, and you have Yarm Lightning. Flames gives you a random Drake, while Yarm has the rebound ability. So I think what they did here is they transitioned Swift Justice into that from that three damaging category to Four. I think maybe they felt the draw was worth an extra cost increase. I'm not too, you know, um, I'm not 100% sure on why this change happened, but that's my guess. Uh, they took this 
three damage or three costing two damage spell um, and moved it up into the four gold category with Yarm Lightning and Flames of Eternity probably because of the secondary ability it has. Plunder still hasn't been moved, it's still at three gold. So that's why there's sort of, you know, now you have three four golding damage cards versus the um, the one uh, three golding, uh, three gold damaging spell. That that took me a while to get out. And I'm sorry about that. But um, I'm just trying to see if I could find it here. Yarm, yeah. So the Yarm Lightning's four. The damage has the rebound. Plunder, the two in the invest. What was the flame? Oop. Should be over here. Yeah. The two, and then the add random Drake. So, I don't Swift. I, I guess maybe they felt the draw was um, a reason to increase its um, cost, but you know, you never know. Uh, so anyway, now we're moving to the other miscellaneous change. Whoops, that's my options. The other miscellaneous changes. So there are three things that also um, got hit, and we're gonna take a look now. This is where we start to get a bit negative. Um, and you'll see why. To better reflect the, their availability in the game, the shard values of commons and rare cards have been changed. Commons are now worth significantly less, and rares are worth significantly more. So, if we go here to take a look at what we uh, they mean by this, uh, if I could find a common card, so I'm just going to go in the crafting to show you guys. They, they only disenchant for two now, which, I don't know. By, so, let's see what I have here. 18 cards, 30. So, basically, it looked like... Yeah. It, it looked like, basically, I think those were all commons, so I get, really, two shards per common, maybe? I, I think... Uh, that's. I mean, I know that's how it works. I'll turn shiny mode off. But, I think this is really going to suck. Um, my shard count is, are, you know, at 11,000 now. Um... But, I don't know how big it's going to grow up to with this change. Acolyte, they're worth 40 now, so I guess that's how they balance it out. Uh, 2 versus 40. But then again, we aren't seeing as many rares from free packs as we used to, so I think they're really gearing towards um, the shop, making sure that people buy packs, whether it be for an event or not. I mean, I have 22 kind of saved up from, you know, 7 from each tournament, 40, 14 from Wild Quest. I bought this randomly. I don't know why. Um, but, yeah, I think with that little change right there, they're trying to gear more people towards the shop to buy some packs if they want to get some rares, which is fine. I could see why, you know, maybe people were too reliant on the free packs and trying to break away, but, um, really interesting to see how that just happened, you know. The shards are significantly, uh, or really I should say the shard count of some players is going to really drop because of this, and we'll see how this works in towards a new expansion, because I know people like to craft them, you know, they buy maybe the expansion pre-order, and then they also, I guess, build up the shards while doing it and then using those shards to craft the rest of the expansion so we'll, we'll see how that really sh we'll, we'll see how this change shows later on um, so let's move on to the next part players no longer earn the periodic 100 card point reward from multiple wins now this part this this well let me finish the sentence before I go back to that this reward was unclear as an incentive to play and create difficulties in balancing the economy between active and less active players Alright, so let's just take a moment to diverge here. Players no longer earn the periodic 100 card point rewards from multiple wins. The wins is not true. Um, the 100 CP was really a reward for playing just str th bleh, just three games. You know, each three games, uh, you play it, and every third, you get the 100 CP. Now, 
I don't know if it was an incentive to play or not. I know it really didn't affect me. It could have affected some other people out there to build up a stockpile of card points. Um, but I didn't mind having it. Um, I thought it was good. I thought it maybe... I guess it did give me a bit of an incentive, maybe, to build up my collection. But, um... Let's see, create difficulties in balancing the economy. I can see where this is true. If you have people just continually getting the 100 CP from games, as soon as they play, I think maybe, let's go with 30, or no. Maybe 30, I think my math is off. I'm trying, I was trying to calculate how many games it has to take for a pack. Maybe 30? I, I think 30, yeah. 30 for a, um, a pack. So I can see how this maybe threw off uh, the economy uh, a bit, um, but this is, again is a change that I don't like necessarily because now the only sources of CP are through quests and the tournament. And the tournament is random too, so that's not even guaranteed CP. If you want guaranteed CP, you're gonna have to do those two quests every day. Um, but anyway, moving on, to help new players get into the game, we are allowing standard set cards to be crafted at half price for a limited time. I don't know if this is still, uh, I don't know if this is still going on or not. Uh, it might be, but then again, I have really all of the standards. Uh, let me see if I can... Oops, that's rare. Where am I going? Standard? I got, oh, maybe they mean the standard set. Yeah, I think they mean the standard set. Ten... Oh, yeah, so it is still going on. So, every... Let's see how much the rares. So, commons are 10. Oh, shit. Rares are 100. Epics are 200. And then are there legendaries? I think there's flux, right? Let me go look for flux. 400. Alright, so they're less expensive. Because I know regular legendaries are 800. So, they kind of been cut in half. That's not bad. Uh, but, yeah... That was really this balance change, if you will. Um, positive on the gameplay features. Uh, a somewhat positive on the... I I'm still confused about Swift Justice a bit, but the Elvish Hunter is a good buff. Um, but the rest of it, I, I kind of see... I mean, the last part, I don't mind, but the the uh, common and rare car card cost and the 100 CP takeaway, uh, I think those were sort of not too good, they're not, they weren't alright changes to me. Um, but yeah, that was the little feature and balance change. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure to uh, give this video a thumbs up, maybe share it with your friends, and comment down below what you think of some of these changes that have hit us. Uh, so, yeah. Until the next video, guys, stay gaming.